Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. Lately, our house has been feeling quite a bit cooler, and not just because we got a new couch. It's cooler because we got a brand new Drio portable air conditioner. To be honest with you though, the original plan was to actually get a window air conditioner because they generally are better and they do a better job cooling the house than a portable air conditioner. But it turns out that the windows in our house are not very window AC friendly. The slide windows that go up and down were too narrow and I could not find any units that would fit into that little space. As for the big windows that slide horizontally, left and right, they were just too big. I would have to either plywood the top of it the top of the window, that big gap, or put some plexiglass there, and my wife was not having it. She said it's gonna look super ugly, so that was not even an option. So really, the only remaining option is a portable air conditioner. And Drio, right in time, reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try out their portable air conditioner. And a week later, here it is. Now, the general opinion on portable air conditioners is pretty poor, and there's a reason for that. That's also why I wanted to get a window air conditioner originally. And the reason for that is, for example, most, like a central air conditioner, they have two units, it's a split unit. They have one unit outside, the condenser unit, and then they have one unit inside, the evaporator coil. Same with a window air conditioner. You got half of it sticking outside, and you got the other half inside the house. Whereas a portable air conditioner, both of them are in one unit inside the house. So optimally, the unit outside is sucking air in from outside and then exhausting it outside. But with a portable air conditioner, especially the ones with the one hose, what they're doing is the air that they're cooling off in the house, they're taking some of that same air that they just cooled off and they're dumping it outside, which is very inefficient, right? And it doesn't cool the house as well. Not only that, when it's doing that, it's actually creating a negative pressure in the house. And to put that in simple terms, basically when the unit is running, the house is sucking air from outside because there's a negative pressure inside the house through all the cracks and gaps and holes in your windows and doors, it's sucking hot air back in. So that makes it double inefficient. So the solution to that is double hose portable air conditioners. So it's sucking air in from outside through one hose and then exhausting it through the other. It's not sucking any air from inside the house to dump it out. Those double hose units do look pretty ugly though and there's not many of them out there. But luckily, Drio had a nice solution to it. They have the dual hose, where it's two hoses in one. And I think that's a really slick design. It looks good, and it accomplishes the same thing as a double hose portable air conditioner. Another thing I really liked is that this is an inverter portable air conditioner, which means that the compressor and the fan are variable speed. They ramp up smoothly and ramp down smoothly, which generally gives you an energy savings of about 30 to 50% and it runs a lot quieter than most other portable air conditioners. That's because the compressor and the fan, they ramp up slowly and ramp down slowly. Instead of just boom, coming on, turning off, coming on, turning off, it just smooths out the whole process. As it gets cooler in the house, it slows down. As it starts heating up, it picks back up. So that's all really cool and good on paper, but what I'm gonna do is run this thing for about two weeks, and I'll be back in two weeks to let you know how it actually performed. Now, while we're waiting for those two weeks, let me show you step-by-step step how to install this Drio portable air conditioner. This right here is what the box looks like when it comes in, and there's two caution notifications that I wanna point out before we get rid of the box. Actually, the pictures on this side of the box look better, so let's take a look at them. This one right here says do not clamp. That one's pretty obvious. If you clamp it, you might damage the portable air conditioner inside. This says use a hand truck, and that's because this unit in here is actually pretty heavy. It says right over here, team lift. I brought this in our house by myself, and it was like 70 or 80 pounds, so I can attest that it's actually pretty heavy. And this one right here is the one that I wanted to point out the most. It says upright only, and that's because this unit has a compressor, which has oil in it. So if this box was on its side when it was getting transported, or it was laying on its side in your garage before you installed it, make sure that you set it upright and you leave it like that for 24 hours before you turn this unit on for the first time. And if you turn on the unit right away before giving the oil time to flow back into the compressor, it could damage it right off the bat when you start it for the first time. And that is all for the cautions. Let's take this box apart and take a look at what's inside. And here are all the wonderful things we found in the box. If you want to know the specific names of all of this stuff and how much of each there are, refer to the owner's manual, page 15. Two things that you should keep in mind when picking a location is that the portable air conditioner needs at least 20 inches of clearance all the way around the unit and above it. 
So wherever you put it, make sure it's not a cramped space and it's not by furniture or anything. It does need to have room around the unit so it can take air in, suck it in and blow it out without any kind of restrictions or obstructions. Another important thing is that the unit needs a dedicated outlet, which means the outlet should not be shared with a bunch of other things. In my case, this is the outlet I chose. So this outlet will be only for the air conditioner. A cool thing about this plug is that it comes with a built-in breaker. So if the unit is drawing more amps than it should be for some reason, then this will trip and shut the unit off. So there shouldn't be any fires or meltdowns with something like this in place. If you're gonna be installing this on a window that goes up or down, you're gonna to need to attach this adapter right over here to the top of the hose. So it goes in like this and you just spin it clockwise so it clips on. Since mine is a horizontal window that goes side to side, I will be using these pieces right here. And I'll show you how they come together right here. The best way to assemble this is to put these two pieces together first and then put the air divider in. So to put them together, you simply just kind of push them together. There's latches on either side and then one in the middle. So just kind of work it until it all plugs in. And you should have a nice one piece deal like this. Now we could put our air divider in. And one thing I wanna point out is that there's a groove inside here on the air divider. That goes on to this ridge right here and then clips into here. Just like that. And then you take this whole assembly and plug it on top of the hose like this. Make sure that all the clips are snapped in and you should be able to pull this hose out. Except in my case, I forgot to release this little clip on the back. To release this clip, all you have to do is just take this whole assembly and kind of make a twisting motion this way to get it to come out. So you're pulling it towards yourself and up and it comes out pretty easy just like that. And then you can stretch this hose out a little bit I won't stretch it too much because we don't know how far we're gonna go yet. But for now, let's stretch it out this much and put in our adhesive strips first. If your window has a net, make sure you pull that out because that hose, it will crash into it. It's not gonna be enough room. So you do need to take it out. I'm gonna start by putting the small adhesive strips on first. The small ones go on the top and the bottom. And I'll put it right in the center of the window groove. Just like that. Just a brief video interruption. I wanna give you a chance to enjoy these lovebirds as well. Anyway, back to the adhesive strips. In this bundle right here, we have the long ones that go on the side. And it looks like this one will be just slightly not enough. So I'm gonna to have to cut a little piece off of the other roll, which is no big deal. By the way, pull this off slowly Otherwise this brown paper sometimes gets stuck to the adhesive tape and stays on there. My window, the side of it is not flat. It has a groove inside, but I don't think that's a big deal because I'm simply gonna go right over that groove like such. This adhesive tape is really sticky, so be careful where you swing it around because it will stick to it really hard. I just said that and it's stuck to this ridge. Look at that. Latches on really good. Next up, we're gonna need our window covers and two of these white plastic bolts. I'm gonna set this thing right in the middle on the adhesive tape that I just put on and go ahead and slide our window closed. Once that is fairly snug, next I'm gonna slide this extension panel out until it reaches the top of my window. Once it's fully extended, I'll take these little bolts and there's holes on the side of this panel. I'm just gonna stick one bolt on either side to secure this thing in place so this panel doesn't drop down. Unfortunately, I couldn't extend it far enough to put it into this slot right here. So I got a little gap over here, 
One way I could remedy this is by cutting it out so it fits precisely up on top, but I really don't have to do that because they give me this non-adhesive foam. So after I'm done and secure this, I'm just simply gonna shove this up on top to make sure that nothing gets through. And before I continue, I noticed a little bit of a problem. I didn't notice this right away, but notice how this opening is way into the groove of the window. So obviously I'm not gonna be able to fit my adapter on here. So I can flip this thing over and have this opening up on top, but that's pretty silly. It's gonna be a big long hose here. We don't want that. So I think what I'm gonna do is simply just flip this thing over and even though the little holes are gonna be down the outside, I don't think it's a big deal. We're gonna flip this over. I gotta take these bolts out first. And everything should be good. Awesome, and since I was working on it outside, it was a little more comfortable for me, and I was able to stretch this thing out and put it into that hole that I wanted to put it into the first time. So now, there pretty much is no gap up on top. It's very small. I'm probably not even gonna put foam there. So let's close the window once again. Nice and tight. There you go. There is a gap right over here. Man, that black foam, it looks kinda ugly. I don't know if I'm gonna put it, probably, probably do have to seal that up, otherwise, um, otherwise bugs are gonna get in. Or you know what, maybe another thing I could do since I have leftover foam, I think I'll just put a double layer of this adhesive tape right over here and just seal that up. I'm actually gonna do that up on top over here too and on this side and that will make a nice seal. And all done. I didn't wanna bore you with the taping footage, but basically I did triple layers here, triple layers here. There's like a little window stopper here that's popping out. So this makes up for the gaps that we were seeing up on top. I did a double layer on the sides where we were seeing gaps and there's probably gonna be gaps on the bottom. So I did a double layer over here too. So now when I put that cover back on, we should be sealed up pretty nicely. And here's the finished result. And I think it's very nice. Everything is sealed up really, really pretty tight. I'm happy with this result. And since it's gonna be more convenient for me to show you this part before I put the hose on, let's go ahead and do that first. I just wanted to show you that there's a plug right here. This plug is just like a carrying plug. You plug this in here, that way the cord is not dangling all over the place as you're walking around. And they have this nice little attachment that you could plug in to wrap your cord around. So that's actually pretty darn neat. I really like this feature. Whenever I carry humidifiers or dehumidifiers, the cord is always dangling everywhere and you trip all over it. So whoever designed this, man, kudos to them. That's a really slick design. Next thing I wanted to show you is the drain. The drain is right over here. It has a plug inside of it that you have to take out and you can stick a hose that is provided in the kit onto this fitting that is inside. It goes like that. Then you stick the hose into a bucket and now the air conditioner is gonna drain into a bucket instead of using the self evaporate feature. The only time you would use this setup is when you're using the dry mode, which I will go over in a little more detail later in the video. So that's the drain and there's another backup drain on the bottom right over here too. And did I mention that this thing has handles as well? I do really appreciate this too. So there's a handle on this side and one on the other side. So it's very easy to carry it, even though it does weigh quite a bit. And last but not least, we have the air filter. We do have one on this unit, just like any other unit. And that is right over here. This should be cleaned at least once a month. If you're using this thing daily on hot days, then probably even more frequently every two or three weeks. This is sucking air in through here, so this little grate will get dirty with dust and whatever else is flying in the air. So you take it out by pulling right over here. There's two clips right up on top, and then you just slide it up. And here's the filter. You can either brush it and vacuum it, or you can wash it and allow it to dry before putting it back in. So make sure you don't forget to do that. And now we gotta put our hose on. Whenever you do stretch it out a lot though, you gotta make sure that it's not kinking and there's no U-shapes in the design of it. 
Make sure that you don't have too many turns and definitely not any kinks if you stretch it out a lot. Optimally, you do want it to be right next to the window like I'm gonna have it right over here. And I also forgot to mention that this big cover right here, you can buy an extension kit and you can use one of these on a slide door. So if none of your windows are an option, you can use a portable air conditioner like this with slide doors as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and put this thing on. So the only thing you really gotta watch for when doing this is that you want it to be in there pretty loosely. You don't want it to be tight and pulling on it as it's in there. So pull it out a little bit more and then make the turn. That way, see how it's just hanging there? It doesn't have any tension on it and that's what you want. And then just clip it into those holes and you should be good to go. These clips don't hold it very well, apparently. That's another reason why you don't want tension on it. And actually, I totally forgot about this screw. And if you're like me and you tend to forget things, right now would be a good thing to put this screw in to hold this whole adapter assembly together. That screw goes in here. There's a total of three screws. One goes in here and the other two go into the securing bracket, which I will go over right after we put this thing in. And now let's try this again. So you wanna pull this thing out a little further than the opening. That way when you actually make the turn, it's gonna be a nice, easy turn. There's not gonna be a lot of tension on this bend. And that's what you want. Then you just gotta put all four of these clips inside of the openings on the window cover. And you should be good to go. If any of the clips pop out, that might mean that there's still a little bit too much tension on the hose. So what you can do is just extend it a little bit more. Just like that. And now everything is in place. Looking pretty good. And if you're interested in what it looks like from the outside, here's the view from the outside. Last but not least, we have the little bracket to secure our window with. And this you would put either on the bottom or top of the window to make sure that nobody opens the window and nothing falls out of there. I have a window stopper here which is in the way, so instead of the bottom, I could put it in on the top, right over here, put my two screws in, and that will hold the window nice and tight. You can also put pressure on the window to make sure that it seals up even better, and then put the screws in. Being that we're in a rental property, they asked us not to make any holes, so I'm simply just gonna tell everybody in the house not to touch this window, and I'm not gonna secure it. Now that the unit is fully installed, let's go over what settings it's capable of. So if we take our remote, we have a little mode button. It has five different modes. If you set it to auto, it basically selects the cooling and fan speeds by itself. All you select is just the temperature, what temperature you want it to cool to, and everything else it does by itself. It ramps up the compressor and the fan to different speeds. It goes up and down by itself. The next mode is cooling. So that basically turns on the air conditioner, the compressor, but you do have control over the fan speeds and you can switch it from low, medium, or high by pressing the fan button over here. The next mode is the dry mode. And in this mode, the unit just turns everything on to the maximum to try to dehumidify the house as much as possible. So if it's feeling humid and moist in the house, this would be a good option. But when you do use it, you don't have control over the fan and you do have to hook up the drain line behind the unit and put a bucket underneath it as the evaporator coil will not keep up with all the moisture that it's pulling out. And the next mode we have is heat. This unit is not a heat pump, so this model does not have this heat option. And last one is fan. That does not turn the compressor on, only the fan is running. And of course you have control over how fast you want it to go. We have a swing button and that controls this louver. So you can actually adjust which, way, which direction you want this thing to be pointing, or you can set it to continuous swing where it just goes up and down, up and down. You also could put a unit on a timer anywhere from zero to 24 hours, depending on how long you want it to run. And last but not least, we also do have a sleep mode and that just runs the air conditioner as quiet as possible on the lowest speeds so it doesn't disturb you while you sleep. By the way, all the options that are on the remote are also available on the unit itself via these buttons right over here. All right, so it's been two weeks now and it's time to let you know how this unit performed. But let's be honest here. Ultimately, the fate of the unit, whether it stays or goes, is always up to the wife. So let me ask my wife, honey, 
What do you think? Was it performing good? Should we keep it or no? She says it's a keeper, so that's a good start. But anyway, I wanna go over five common complaints about portable air conditioners and see how this unit lives up to them. Complaint number one is that they're noisy. This unit is running right now while I'm talking. I left it on on purpose so that you can hear it running at its full speed. So it's high fan speed and it's in the cool mode. So it's about as loud as it gets. And as you can tell, or maybe not tell on the microphone, it, it's not too bad. It's about as loud as an efficient window air conditioner. Actually, most of them are gonna be louder than this unit. So it's good. It, we're not really bothered by it when we're sitting at the table or at the couch. It, it's not bad, it's not obnoxious. It runs in the background and we just kinda got used to it. Complaint number two is that they are difficult to move. Honestly, I don't think that's a big issue because for most people, after you place them and hook them up to the window, you put the window cover on and everything, you're probably never gonna move them again. And unless you're going up or down stairs, this unit is very easy to move because it has rollers on the bottom of it and it rolls around really easily. And if you carry it later on at some point, there are handles on there. And if you have two people carrying it, it's gonna be no big deal at all. Complaint number three is having to drain it regularly. And I love that I don't have to do this with this one. If I had to, this would, I would definitely not wanna get this unit actually. But this one has the self evaporating feature. So whatever condensation it pulls out of the air, it automatically evaporates it using the fan. And if for some reason the water is backing up in the unit, or maybe you're using the dry mode without hooking up the hose in the bucket, then it does have a sensor inside of it. So if the water level is getting too high, it'll automatically turn the unit off until that water level drops. And common complaint number four is that it has a limited cooling space. And I think that's kind of a weird complaint because if you're buying a portable air conditioner or a window air conditioner, you're expecting to only be cooling a limited space, not the whole entire house. So like a living room or a bedroom. In our case, it's in a living room slash dining room. So it's a bigger room. Actually, this is a 600 square foot area, whereas this is only meant to cool 450 square feet. Yet, it still gets the job done pretty good. It feels nice and cool in our house. And by the way, for those of you that might care, if I stand 25 feet away from this unit by the wall on the other side of the room, I still do feel the air all the way from there. So it blows pretty powerfully. So I think number four is not even really a valid complaint. So let's move on to number five. And number five is that portable air conditioners are not efficient. Most of that is coming from the portable air conditioners with just the one hose. All the portable air conditioners that have the dual hoses or two hoses, they're already a lot more efficient. Plus, this unit has the inverter compressor, which brings the efficiency up even more. So with units like this, they're as efficient as window air conditioners or even a little bit more. We've only had the unit for about two weeks now, so I haven't had a chance to see how it affected our electrical bill. But if you ask me in the comments later on, I'll try to get back to you and let you know how much our electrical bill jumped after we started using this unit. And while we're talking about efficiency, there is one thing that bothers me. It's not a big deal, it's not a big deal, but I am a little bothered. This adapter, this connection point right here, and all the clips, there's pretty big gaps all the way around where bugs can get in and warm air can get in. I mean, I could probably seal that up with something, I can find something to seal it with, but it would be nice if it came with the kit some kind of a rubber seal or some kind of little plugs to plug up all these little holes around this connector. But overall, we're really happy with this unit. It has been performing well. And like my wife said, it is a keeper. We're gonna hang on to it. I think portable air conditioners are great options to have, especially for renters where they don't want you to drill any holes or modify the windows at all or for the houses that don't really accommodate the window air conditioners, these portable ones really save the day. Portable ACs and window ACs are all good and stuff, but if you can afford it, getting a ductless mini split will be way better than any of those options. Those things are the best. In fact, before we got this portable AC, I considered reaching out to the homeowner, whoever owns this house, and asking him if he would be cool if I put in a mini split with two heads into this house. But since we're not sure how long exactly we're gonna be staying here, renting this place, we kind of decided to ditch that idea and just go with a portable AC or with a window AC. Anyway, that is all I had for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have anything to add to what I've said about portable ACs or anything else, please let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me tell you a little story. So a robber comes to a house when there's nobody home and he sees a sign on the door and the sign says, caution angry parrot. He just laughs to himself and says, ha, what parrot? He just walks right in 
And no sooner than he walks past the door, he sees the cage with the parrot inside. He looks at the parrot, the parrot looks at him, and then the parrot turns around and yells, Killer, fetch! Now it's supposed to fit.